What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of GSP, the Good Sugar Podcast. I'm going to tell you off the top of the show, the number one email I get, and I, this, I feel like I'm going to upset a few of our, our listeners, because I get, they always feel the show should be a little longer. I get that. I'm a, an old radio school, radio sh- guy that's what I believe that less is more. You know, they should leave you wanting more as opposed to when the fuck is the show going to end? That's always my rationale. And unfortunately today, I feel that people that do listen are going to be a little upset, and I'll tell you why. Uh, if I'm holding this up right here, I just got my uh, third shot. I got my booster two days ago. And man, I feel a little out of it today. It's hard to stay um, vertical. I feel a little woozy and wonky today. Yesterday I felt fine, but today I feel uh, off. Yesterday was Thanksgiving. Marcus, did you have a nice time with family and stuff? I did. We had a, we had a really helter-skelter type Thanksgiving because my wife has two kids and I have two kids. And we have a baby we share together. So there's five of us and there's... Well, five kids. Five kids. Yeah. Five very different opinions about what needs to be uh, eaten. And uh, so it turns out to just be such a bizarre event. But it's actually nice because I think the whole point of it is just to be with family, not to have the perfect spread. Were there other family there or is it the two of you and the five kids? No, it's it's too hectic to have... First of all, you know, my parents live in Florida. Right. My brother was with your parents. I just came back from Florida a week or so, so I wasn't going to go back again on the worst time of the year to travel. That would with a with a seven month old baby. Let me add that. No, I mean there's 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 I'm sure she has family and there's other friends or whatnot, you know. But just there's a seven. Her her family. Uh, she has a brother in Germany. My wife and Mm. um her mother's side of the family is all in Tobago in um, Trinidad, man. Oh, is that where that's that's what she is? German and she, she's an interesting. She's an interesting breed. You know, a lot of people from the far east India migrated to Trinidad as they did in a lot of those uh, tropical places. So she is Indian by. Um, it's not. Uh, it's not. That's not a race, by the way. People would mistake that. Uh, she's Indian by her culture, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, she was raised. She looks. She looks. Indian. Her her mom looks Indian. They all lived in uh, Trinidad, and uh, and and then her mom, when she was eight, met a dude, moved to Germany. So Teresa grew up in Germany. So she's a she speaks German, and she's an interesting mix. That's cool. I like that. I got a couple of things to tell you off the top. I know you want to talk about a couple of things too. Um, number one, I went for an MRI for my shoulder because, as you know, I've been telling for a while. I have been doing the thing you've suggested, which was meditate and focus, but on this area, I don't know how much it's going to do. There's an actual tear. I'm, I'm going to screw up the word. Is it labrum? I think is the word. Is like a, a tear I'll in Google the labrum. It later. We'll, 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 we'll Google, Google it later. later. And the bicep has an issue as well. And a small tear in the rotator cuff. All three, which is awful, right? Um, and I may need surgery. Just a side note, when I went there, um, I had to wait an hour for the MRI. And you're supposed to fill out beforehand how tall are you? How much do you weigh for the uh, MRI machine? And I get there and I wait the hour. And as soon as we get into the machine, the guy goes, oh, you're too big for this machine. You're not going to fit in this machine. We have to move you to the big machine, which makes me feel stupid anyway. But that was... Yeah, as you were naked, why was he looking at your pants? Yeah, exactly. Then there's another hour wait for a different so, machine so at a different location. Joke, and when I get into that machine, and this is just a shitty thing for a guy to say, he goes, oh, what did the... The other machine scare you a little bit. You came to the bigger machine and just a, like a shitty thing to say, especially after I was waiting two hours, you know, like not that it would I just like, why would you shame? Even though that wasn't the reason I was there, it's weird that you would shame a, 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 a patient. You know what I'm saying? You know, the best revenge you could have had in that moment was just started bursting out hysterical into tears. Tears, right? I wish and I just could. carried it. And then when he's looking at you saying, you know, I've no one ever has made fun of me in such a terrible way. And just, turn the shame back onto him and don't say anything. And then he'll think about that. Maybe if he's an evil guy, he'll go, wow, I can shame people and get paid. So I'll yeah. keep doing it. <laughs> I gave him a new, a new life path, right? So, but that leads me to my first thing that I want to get your opinion on. So as I try to expand my meditation practice, don't do it. I do four minutes a day, every day, right? Too didn't much, do today. Too much, too much. Someone You're laughed excessive. at me when I said four minutes. They laughed at me. <laughs> I was like, look, I started at two. Give me a fucking it's break. Such, you know what? You you uh, you said that book, uh, Atomic Habits, about 800 times. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. We're coming right back. It shows me how unbelievable 
this discovery I made about marketing and branding and this discovery I made about how to influence people. The discovery is that when you want to influence somebody, when you want to brand a product, you just keep right, doing Marcus, it in start, time start ways, that, which matches that, that Marcus, book, Marcus. Atomic Habits. And, Stop that. We lost you for a whole second there. So start, uh, start over again. Start over again. Start with the whole Atomic Habits thing. All right. Sorry to interrupt, but you mentioned this book, Atomic Habits, a bunch of times. And so what comes up for me is marketing, branding, and how to influence people. And of course, only in a positive way. It's to say something to them first, plant the seed. 99% mm -hmm. of the time, a person is going to fight it and disagree. I don't know why it works like that. Right. I agree. But, it's, but it's, it, but, people, people always love to give, uh, give suggestions and take. It is the, right. the nature of humanity. It's a, it's a form of long-term hypnosis. If I, if I was a hypnosis person and you were a patient who believed in that, I should be able to convince you of certain things in a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. In our case, it takes a very long time. So I would say is with Atomic Habits, the premise of the book is that you make tiny changes and then you can look back over a year and say, look, if uh, 10 years, I got better by 2% each year. Right. That's what At the end of the 10 years, you're 20% yeah. better, right? Yeah, and that's a big course. difference, right? Okay. Yeah. So, and, and of course, it's a methodology of coaching and it's a methodology of getting projects done. And so in, in your case, if I would have said to you, look, I want you to meditate like you're a monk in a cave, just sit there for six hours. In fact, after a month, I want them to find your mummified body because you haven't moved. You would never do it. You're, you're, you can't. Right. Your brain cannot right. I'm going to interrupt you and say this. The pragmatic way to look at that, though, too, is like, let's say you want to be in phenomenal shape. You can't start by lifting 250 pounds. You you're gonna, it's impossible. You're gonna break. It's so impossible. you start small and you slowly build. And that's, it's, it's, that's what this is, is starting small and slowly building. But even There's that nothing concept, wrong with that. even that concept, I know that people will listen and they'll say that makes sense, but it doesn't integrate. And so the way to integrate it is to create literal tasks and tests all over your life where you can practice the idea. You can say, okay, look, I'm going to do my laundry and I know how to do my laundry, but instead of just doing my laundry, I'm going to make a list of the 10 things I have to do to my, do my laundry. So right, I can right. break things down into smaller parts so that when you get to more difficult things, God forbid someone dies and you have to bury them. Something that you don't often do and you're actually experiencing trauma. Something and I just did less than a month right. ago, about a month ago. Yeah. When you have practiced doing that and you're in a difficult spot and you're dumping adrenaline and you're grieving or trauma, your brain will automatically work like that. You'll go, okay, I got to just get on the phone and call this place. And you'll see the list. Right. And it makes difficult things easier. I so agree practice with that. is very important. So I, I let's go back to your little meditation. That's what I was saying. So I do the four minutes and yes, sometimes I'll, what I'll do is I'll try and focus on like what you suggested a couple of weeks ago thinking about my shoulder. I generally think about, you know, I say things like be grateful and be happy and be in the moment, shit like that, right? When did but you start doing that? I've been doing that for since the beginning or just breathing, focusing on the breathing. Did you out. always do that? Yeah, always. Before yeah. the show? No. I mean, what do you mean? You mean like during meditation? No, you just said something so profoundly significant to the progress of this show is that you just said, I say positive things to myself. Oh, I do that. I've been doing that my whole life. So like, okay, that's, that's actually, what, really, you, you know what? We, I'm making a note. Ralph is not an asshole. <laughs> I do that my whole life. And by the way, I tell people that all the time, especially like the fact that I am 51 and my arms and legs work and my brain is somewhat normal and I'm ambulatory and you know, all these things that I always focus on. God damn it. I'm so lucky. Forget you, about everything so then else. You would say that you generally have a positive attitude and at some point, we have to talk about how a person either just generally develops that when they're young or from intelligence or a survival method or something they heard. Again, it's just another really key part of finding happiness is to be willing to say bullshit to yourself, even right, when you know I, things I suck. All right, go ahead. So you're well, talking meditation. Way, we have one of, our, one of my network producers. Brian, are you there by any chance or did you step out of the room? <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering, as, as your boss at Gas Digital, this will have no effect on your employment with the company. Would you say that I'm generally <laughs> uh, a positive, happy person or not? And feel, I promise gun. you, there he's, is he's not going to fire you now. He's going to fire you later. There, there's no way this would affect your job in any way, shape, or form. I, I know how this trick works. No, but for real, um, 
Ralph is Ralph is always great when he comes into the office. He's never like a grump, and he always has a smile on his face, and he's always playing around like he's he's generally good energy. No, right. thank you, Brian. You're not fired. No, you're, okay, you're so not fired. <laughs> the um the issue I have, and this is what I, you have sent me over the last couple of months, like videos to lit to play in the background when I meditate. Right? You've sent me a few. I have a hard time doing that. I have a hard time. I'd rather be in silence. I don't know if that's a positive or a negative, but I'd rather even like playing like spa music. You know, it's, or not, like, it's, a, it's I'm not going to judge it positive or negative. I'm going to say it's very advanced. Okay, because I have a hard time whenever you send me it's those advanced. Things, it's I can't advanced. do it. It's I'd very rather advanced. be in silence. That I think that's advanced in my opinion because I know how difficult it is for us to unplug everything and just keep unplugging, find 10 more layers of things that we're plugged into. And ultimately it's not a, it's not a race. It's not a contest. It's not trying to show, you know, someone has more power. The idea is as you develop the emotional strength to look inside and see your character and what bothers you and what hurts you and what sadness you carry or resentments or gratitude. When you just have to look at yourself, sometimes it's oftentimes very painful and, and a person can feel uh, terrified by that and get anxiety. So that's why we need a little noise. We, mm -hmm. we, we know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that either because it takes what it takes to graduate to each level. As long as you're actually practicing, you're going to get better at your own pace. Right. Ironically, by the way, I can't go to sleep in silence. I have to have something on in the background. It's torturous for me to sleep. Why in do you say that? I, I have slight tinnitus. Okay. And so I just have a hard time blocking the world out when I'm repeating like a thoughts in my head about, you know, so what do you well today. listen to Def Leppard when you go to sleep? You know, I actually have either the Amazon device play rain or I leave like, um, uh, some mindless TV show that I'm not going to pay attention. To I can't, you know what we can do. An, we have all these shows that we can talk about you know last week i i tackled you on uh, the intimacy issue uh this week we can talk about how you know what some people actually just need some white noise because that's just that's where they're at you know yeah, and yeah. and uh there's not, i don't think there's anything wrong with that all right good and by the way then the last thing on the, i have like five quick topics so the other thing it's funny is that you know i post uh clips from both this show and my other show the fcr show on my instagram every week right and it's so funny that the fans that follow me for one reason or the other on the um, SDR show, when I post things, I'll see people commenting like, you know, Ralph looks like a Frankenstein. Ralph is such a creep or whatever. And then on the good sugar ones, I'm like, look how good he looks. He lost so much weight. And it's so funny to read the, the polarizing takes of our two different fan bases. Which is just, it's funny. I've ever get. What if um, it's the same fans? They're just be, choosing which format they want to be a dick in. <laughs> that could be very, 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 very possible. Okay. Right? So now, other than today, because I'm, I'm not working out today, because I, I told you I got the booster and I think I need a day. This week was the first week since I got COVID three months ago. I'm back to a full schedule. I am running three days a week, uh, four, seven, 10, work out with the trainer three days a week, do Peloton three days a week, do yoga three days a week. So, Technically, or is that 12 things a week, right? Um, do you feel, and I know it's a different topic because it's just about the physicality of it all. That's more than enough. Like, I don't need to push myself any further, right? Like, I'm doing a good amount of shit. Do you agree with that? No. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 first of all, it's relative to how, how, how any, if, if, if what you're doing makes you unhappy, yeah, then you're no, pushing it, it the happy. wrong way. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. it would so, you look, you don't have kids. Your, your career is, you're managing your career. You're not in a relationship. You're not uh, building bridges in Botswana. What else are you going to do with your time? Well, I mean. You're writing books? Working. I wrote a book. I know. You saw it. Was excellent. Really well done. Good. Who is the editor? That book was sensationally edited. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm actually saying you have to occupy yourself with something. And it's right. going to change throughout your life. If you suddenly got into a great relationship, you'd probably have less time to go to the gym. Right. So, okay. I mean, you know, I think that it's a positive outlet for you, you know, and what you want to do is just keep switching things around so that you don't get bored or lose interest. Or let's say right now you're, see, this is how I feel about it. You're asking me, I'm going to tell you, your shoulder is not, it's a little squirrely. Yeah. Uh, you just got the COVID shot. And so the things that you chose as your workouts, they're too intense 
when you're feeling low. So if you felt low for two weeks, you'd probably drop out. You'd fall so far behind. So what I recommend that you do is just take these little atomic steps. Do you have a yoga mat at your house? Wait, Marcus, you got to start that again. What I recommend you do is, because you cut out. Okay, sorry. It's going to be as good as it can be here. I'm in Atlantic right. Beach. Um, what I recommend you do is... What I, recommend, what I recommend that you do is, oh, first, do you have a yoga mat? Of course, I do yoga in the house three days a week. Okay. So, yeah. So, I would pick a very simple, safe, no real exertion required two or three yoga posture routine you do when you're just down and out because it'll actually help you feel better. So, you can pick something like, okay, you know, I'm going to do um, easy postures, right? You, like you do, sometimes you do spinal twist. Uh huh. Okay pick a spinal twist. And instead of doing it for the four or five breaths that you normally do it in a class, you say, I'm going to sit in this for two minutes and I'm just going to really concentrate on my breath. And then uh, are you good at forward bends or are you really tight? I'm still very tight. I'm trying okay. to get better. So here's how you actually get better. You sit on a yoga mat and instead of trying to get range, you stop where, you, where you're uncomfortable and you just breathe. And instead of doing it for five breaths, you do it, you hold it for three minutes. And you do okay. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. That's a lot. Yeah. No, it's, I, by the way, my doable. yoga is 10 to 20 minutes. I don't do more than that. Then, when I do then, yoga. then it's, 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 look, I'm not going to, I'm not a religious guy. I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a yogi, but I read a lot. And the yoga sutras, which are written a long time ago, and they're, I don't think that they're religious teachings at all. I think they're very intellectual teachings. But they say that a person is supposed to do exercise seven days a week. That doesn't mean that there's two days a week where you're, you would consider relative to what you do extreme rest. Obviously, you can't work out seven days a week to your extreme. But right. on six and seven, maybe you're just walking a lot. Or maybe you're saying, okay, I'm doing push-ups, sit-ups. You have to I do agree. something yeah. for the mind and the body every day. I agree with all that. Um, so now the last couple of quick questions. Uh, one which kind of surprised me, I think it was last week or the week before, where you kind of said that some people who are in the super healthy, you know, high up on the pyramid of health, shit on stimulants like green tea or maca powder or caffeine, yeah, right? I don't know why I never really made that association. Do you feel that it's something people should strive to is removing any stimulants? And I, by stimulants, I mean yeah, those. That's a like, great question because we talked about this and – you know what? I would say that it's pro these are probably some of the most important things that we talk about, and I have to make sure that I say it correctly, okay? You could, you're could you going to live an extremely long time with imperfections in your diet and your lifestyle. Your body has a margin of error. If it didn't, we would have been dead a long time ago. Right. The first most important thing is to eliminate processed food. The second thing is to find a way to be happy. If you do those two things... You're on a path that's destiny, baby, right? Don't get hit by a bus or, you know, don't jump out of airplanes. If a person wants to keep going higher and higher up this ladder for whatever compels them, then it's obvious what they have to do for the body and the mind. It's not easy. It's not for everybody, right? So what I would say is that there are people that have to follow some of these principles because they're very sick and their body is using all of its resources to recover. Mm -hmm. If somebody had a very serious illness, they would not want to stimulate themselves with their diet. Uh, there's exceptions, right? And, and I'm not smart enough to say the exceptions. There's exceptions. I knew a woman who had severe scleroderma and her heart was hardening. She was very young. She needed a heart transplant. She didn't want to do it. I knew her through juice press. She was a customer. She, sh she showed me that um, she was taking 150 vitamins per day. Jesus. For two years. So I found that fascinating. So I asked a medical doctor, Jeffrey Mechanic. I said, What's, what can happen from that? And he laughed. Uh, and I asked Fred Bishi, my mentor, and he didn't laugh, but he said, well, you know, she's just really stimulating her body in a non-toxic way. It's not really a solution. And, you know, he, kn he knew her and knew her diet was clean. She ended up passing away. And that was where she was going without having intervention mm -hmm. in the things that you're asking about 
there's there's always an outlier. There's always an exception. So you can't really say absolutes. We can say for you, where you're at right now, your worst problem is not going to be that you drank uh, eight ounces of green tea every day. It's not going to be that you had three tablespoons of maple syrup. That's not going to be right. a thing that causes you a problem. So don't focus on those things. Focus in on the big things. The big things are do right now. Are you do you are you a, a big alcohol drinker? No, I mean, do, do I, I need have, to tell anybody why that's not the best thing? Yeah, no, I'm no, not I being mean, judgmental. I, I honestly almost never have alcohol. I mean, do you, do you, are you consuming cocaine, Adderall? Are you, the worst thing for me is I do tend to once in a while break down and do crystal meth. No, break down and do um, <laughs> like have a, a cake or a cookie or something that is right. really just garbage. You know, okay. That's a drinking. I could go months without a, a drop of alcohol. I don't yeah, I know. You're, you're an extraordinarily social drinker. Right. Yeah. And so I would say that for where you're at right now, I wouldn't concentrate on those things. I would think on the things that you do habitually day after day, the things that you do once in a while come later. I do have a shot they, of espresso every morning. That, that's fine. It's just where you're at. Look, you're stimulated. And by the way, I want to say that we all know, I think it, when we compare the different drugs out there and what they do to your consciousness, coffee is the most addictive one. More like, than sugar. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Wow. I think that if you, if you, if you, if you, let, let me say this. If you, let's say 10 of us were marooned in Alaska mm -hmm. and we needed something to generate more body heat, besides eating animal protein, we would probably want highly stimulating things because they would right. stimulate us. We would generate more heat in general. That's abstract science. I don't really know that that's true, but that's what wacky health people like us always talk about. It's a commonly believed thing that stimulants just generate heat. Sometimes when yeah. a person is cold and they're not, they don't cover themselves up. Instead, what they do is they just eat. So it's sometimes getting healthy is about identifying what it feels like to be uncomfortable in your body and then trying to give yourself the thing that you actually need versus a replacement, stimulant, activity, shopping, buying, sex addiction, alcoholism, cocaine, all the things that we do when simply we just needed to put a blanket over our body so we can feel warm. Sorry, very dense. Okay. So now here's my last, it's a two-parter. You understand you, that or was it way I did too understand dense? It. Yeah, I, I just feel like, you know, I, I get it. I'm good with all that. I, don't, I didn't, I don't think it went over my head. I'm good with all of it. D does our audience get that or is it just boring? I, oh, I, a fly was in here. Sorry. If you're looking at me and I look crazy, I just want to try and swat the wall as a fly. I, I think, think our, I said, I, I, when I get into that zone of babbling, I'm hearing myself and it makes sense to me. I'm not a good teacher of what I'm saying, but I really well, know I it, was, it to be I the truth. Was, I think it was, uh, I think you were on point. So Thank now you. it's a two-parter, this thing. Number one, which I hate that this is true and you may disagree and I'm feeling that you will, but I'm going to say this anyway. There's no way you can argue that having money will make you a little happier. And the reason That's being... That's so stupid. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Go ahead. And I don't mean by having a tremendous amount of money. I mean that... You said it in such an absolute. How about you just reframe it as... I'm saying this. Absolute. If you don't need to worry about paying your rent, feeding yourself, shelter, all that shit, if, you can, if that's not a stress in your life, you can focus on other things. Do you not think that's true? Well, I would ordinarily have thought it was true, but I have met a lot of people who are well below the poverty line who are actually incredibly happy people. I'm and not denying not, that doesn't exist. Not I'm just pretending. Saying. So I said you said it in an absolute way because when you say it in an absolute way, then what you do is you automatically set up anxiety for yourself, which is I have to have money or I'm going to suffer. But money it's, is a different word. Like, there's a question about well, how much is enough, you know, when is enough enough? I don't need to have millions of dollars, right? If I'm not stressed about paying my rent, if I'm not stressed about eating, or if I want to get a trip once every few months, it's not going to bankrupt me. Having that puts me in a better place. Mentally. Because because of the society that you live in. Let's just look at it from well, I'd another. Have to, yeah, I'd have to change no, my entire life. No, well, let's look at it from the most simple perspective. Obviously, human beings are not born with a map to find a pot of gold. So if you had lived in a very earth honoring, compassionate, nonviolent I, I, lifestyle, I'm not denying it, but we're here now. Land, we're here now. The wealth wouldn't be in rent 
landlords, objects, it would really be in the abundance of the land. So, so, so I want to just say the reason and I'm bringing that up is not to be a schmuck. I'm not trying to be an activist. I'm trying to say is that look what your brain is programmed for. And well, I think you're looking at, at it the wrong way. The reason why I'm saying it's, it's wrong, I not want to argue, but the saying is that we are in this society right now. I'm not living off the land in, yes. you know, in Australia no, with, with the you Aboriginal. Misunderstood you misunderstood me. I'm not trying to say that you should go back to that. What I'm saying is I'm using the way that we're designed as a reference point so that you can understand why our lifestyles cause us unnatural stress. You still have to deal with it because you're not going to just throw your clothes off and go live in your backyard and eat grass. It's not going to happen. Right. So yes, you do have to do it. But if you have an understanding of some of the things that throw us off, then we have better solutions to those problems. You can't, yes, of course, in our society, the way that we feel protected and safe, which is one of our primary needs, is we need shelter. Right. We're not going to live and outside. Food. And food and 25 other things. Right. There's a list of things that you need. You should write out the list someday so that you know that anything that's not on the list is not a need. I'm sorry. It's well, not a, there's five primary ones, and they all start with the letter S. I've no, said that a million I wrote, times. I wrote, I wrote this uh, with someone um, years ago. And I show it to people all the time. I say, would you, I, I'll send it to you. I'll say, would you agree with this? And and you'll you'll probably because of your 600 IQ, you'll probably come back with three things, or you well, might disagree. I, I just said what, what I said. You could disagree that that I have. There's five things in your life that you don't have. No matter what else is You're going done. on in the world, you will be miserable. Like what? Okay. All right. Uh, shelter. And by shelter, I mean. You should be comfortable in your home. If you're not comfortable in your home, all right, got it. Shelter. That's okay. your, that's not that, that's not that's number three on the list. But go ahead. Sustenance. Number, I'd put that as uh, number two. Food. Shitting. Okay, that's a little further down the line. That's a waste removal. What saying, if you're not shitting? Hold, hold on. It's bodily functions. You don't just say shitting. There's other bodily functions right. that you I do. But do, again, right? the reason why I'm doing it is they all start with the letter S. It's fun that way. That's so stupid. Come on, let's go. Let's number. Give me another Sex. one. Sex. Uh, we'll say uh, we're going to put sex under human relationships, human contact. Because sure. you can't say that yeah. it's a need that everybody reproduces. Right. Right. It's not. I, I, right now, because I'm, my brain's not 100%, if I got my fifth S, that's funny. <laughs> Those are, I'm sorry, my Mark, brain is not working. As no, you'd say, if you're really trying to be literal, you'd say the first thing you need is air. You're dead in, in right. one minute without it. Then, of course, I would separate it and say water because water, you can go for about a month. Then it would be sustenance. And you can go I don't for about a month without water? That's not Absolutely. True. I saw Fred Vichy do it once, 40 days. He did two 40-day water fasts. Without anything? And, uh, you mean just water? Nothing, just straight straight water, not right, even no, lemon well, you, The way you worded it, you said without water for 30 days. You can live on water. Just oh, for 30 oh, sorry, days. sorry. Yeah, that sorry. makes sense. Thank you. For, yeah. Okay, thank you. We don't want to... We don't want to confuse yeah, that, that I was like, I think water is I would three say, days. I would say that shelter is further down the line because there are other things that we need before shelter, like depending on the climate. Obviously, if you're living in frozen area without shelter, you're going to, the, the, the elements are going to kill you. But I would say that human beings need for space to move is very important. And um, even before that, we need when we're children, when we're young, we need love. The child does not develop without love. And you'd say human contact is actually right, right up there on the list. And then you go down the list as you get a little bit more mature. You'd say you need a, you need dignity um, and obviously a feeling of safety. Those are really important things. Uh, you definitely need people who are actually uh, community-oriented creatures. Uh, you know, People can live in solitude, but we'd see most of us would lose our mind. It's really important to see that list because... Anything above shelter, a blanket, all that stuff is really just extra. It's, it has to do with socialization. Right. It's not a necessity. And there's a difference. I agree with all that, by the way. But then what it led to my question was, so, and this is a very morbid statement, but whatever. So when my, I was paying all my uncle's bills, right? And my uncle passed away uh, a little while ago. Which Sorry to hear up, that. Uh, which freed up a little bit of money because it was paying all of his bills. So now I had some money to like, in frivolous, I don't want to say frivolous, but like, for the first time in five or six years to, to purchase something for the purposes of funsies as opposed to anything else, right? You got so that I, latex uh, sex doll? 
Yes. No, those are happening. Wow, that was a big spend. What was that? Seven that grand? I'm, on a, I'm on a sex doll of the month club. That's something you got her. Spread. You got her. So you got her in such a weird body position. Why? why I, I didn't think I, I got your position. bone induction headphones that you had. Right. But I got the better ones They They definitely sound great. Right. Um, and I bought a, one of the smartwatches, right, by, by Samsung. So my question to you, which was my last question on my list, is what is a Marcus frivolous purchase? What is a Marcus solely for your own personal enjoyment purchase? And don't say like a fancy yoga mat or something. No, like you that. know, come on, man. You know I mean, you, have the in, you have the induction headphones, so Listen, obviously I that's spent, something. Um, if you ask that question, if I answer it honestly, I would link spending to every sequence of my life Completely. I was actually writing about this the other day about how there's actually the habit of consumerism in the world, which I'm still coming to understand. I can't really talk about it with any great intelligence, but I do recognize that I buy shit sometimes just to feel all right. Right. We and that's do. why, that's by the way, that's why the 99 cent stores work because everyone gets to do it. doesn't make a difference. I, I walk by there oftentimes and I, I make poems up in my head about how when people don't need anything, but they feel lost and ungrounded. There's nothing more grounding than rummaging through a 99 cent bin and you don't even have to buy anything. It's just, a, it's a, it's an activity that feels like it can fill voids that we have in our emotional life. So, you know, for years, everything I did. Was I remember a, was when we were kids, you loved to get really fancy suits. That was a big thing. Look, for you I, my dad, my dad used money to feel better about himself. It's definitely very it's a very easy thing to pass on. Um, I've changed dramatically. I'm not going to say, like, if you came right now, there's no way that you would confuse me with a monk. <laughs> not going to happen. I have stuff. And what I, I think about in my life today is, you know, when I, when I got rid of my gold Rolex watch, when it no longer was important to me, and in fact, when did it actually become a burden? And I don't mm -hmm. judge anyone who has that. Because I know what it feels now. I just have a tattoo of the word Rolex That's funny. on my wrist, which I'm showing to people who are watching yeah, the like, YouTube. Yeah. By the way, and it's funny for me. All that stuff, like the super fancy look, I have money stuff. Never, I don't, I don't need a fancy car. I don't need no, a fancy but you, watch. You, you are a fancy guy in your way. I know lots of very I like wealthy. Food, food is one of my big ones. I met countless wealthy people in two different careers, and it's amazing how generally I find it to be self-made people who started with nothing always have very idiosyncratic spending habits. Like I know guys that'll spend $800,000 on a car, but their shirts have to be discounted $25. <laughs> it makes no sense. And so we all have different values of money yeah. for whatever reasons. You, you're definitely a spender. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I don't much buy more, clothes. Much really. more than your twin brother. My, my brother's you, not a spend. My, my biggest expense is food. I like going to nice restaurants. That's a big one for me. That's probably the biggest part of what I don't really buy myself a lot of shit. You, you know, you know, you know where you spend money and the more money you make, you'd see that you would find your own, like, um, I, I'll tell her, can I tell a respectful story about your dad? Sure. So my dad and your dad were best friends for many years. My dad tells me the story often that he was talking to your dad on the phone and your dad was getting ready to go to your cousin Ralph's wedding. And your dad is obviously very close to his brother, Elliot, and very close to little Ralph, right? Yeah, my cousin Ralph, yeah. yeah. Your cousin Ralph. So your dad was bitching about taking a taxi to the wedding. And my dad said to him, why don't you just order a limousine? This is before mm -hmm. Uber, obviously, all that stuff, right? Right. And uh, your dad said, I'm not spending uh, uh, 300 bucks on, on, a, on a limousine. And your dad had more than $100 million in the bank account. And he wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't like he was 18 and supporting baby right. mamas. My dad said to him, Elliot, uh, or, um, Irving, if you have $100 million and you don't spend any of it, it's like you don't have it. And he said, how many times is your nephew going to get married? It's not like it's a it's an it's a daily expense. Treat yourself. You deserve it. Enjoy right. it. And he did it. Now that's nice. He used to listen you know, to my you know, dad funny. sometimes. On that same topic, which is funny, is that one time um, my dad's my 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 stepmom's nephew or niece, I forget which one, was getting married, and it was in upstate New York. And my dad was saying, "Why is it upstate? Like, I don't want to go all the way upstate." My dad was a little bit agoraphobic, like to stay local in New York. And I don't want to go there. And and my stepmom said, "Well, it's like it was like fifty thousand dollars more." to have the wedding in Manhattan so they're going to have it upstate. 
And my dad was like, well, I'll give them the 50,000. I'd rather stay in New York, which is a such <laughs> Did a he funny, he didn't do it. They didn't do it, but I don't even oh. know if he was serious, but it's just funny how there it goes, how you justify where your money's going. And for them at the time, he just didn't want to go up there. It's funny. I um, grew up, I, re- I grew up around people that my dad associated with him. And there's a guy named Bl- Blackjack. Well, you're breaking up, Marcus. Sandies. God damn it. Marcus, he, you're breaking up. You're breaking up, Marcus. All right. All right, you're back. I'm back. Where, like, where should I start? Uh, a friend named, was it Blackjack? That what okay, sorry. Here I go. Watch this. I grew up around a lot of my dad's nefarious friends that used to work for him in his art gallery business. And there was a guy named Blackjack who was biologically allergic to any type of stress or any discomfort. Like he, I, I actually remember Blackjack like coming into a restaurant and he'll take $300 out of his pocket and say to the waitress, turn the air conditioner on full blast. And he'd give her a $300 tip. That's, that's how, that's just how he was zero tolerance. And so I knew him so well because he was always around, you know, he would tell some, like he ran out of cigarettes. He would give, and this is in the early eighties. He'd give somebody that worked in the store, here's a hundred dollars, get me a pack of cigarettes, kill the, kill the hundred. He was so That's phobic so like that, you yeah. know? So, you know, some people can't tolerate frustration by the way. And I think it's a side effect of having too much comfort and moving further and further away from being an animal that lives close to the land. The yeah, higher up that. you go, not all the time, the, the more comfortable you need, the more your comfort needs amplify. There's that great quote, which is, uh, hard times create hard men. Hard men create soft times. Soft times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. You know, so or hard times. You, you There's a sex it. joke in there sometimes, yeah. right? Isn't but, there? Um, let's do this. On the, I know you had some things to bring up as well, Marcus, but I feel like I'm going to pass out. So can we do your stuff oh, next God. time? You and your little, you and your little illnesses. I'm sorry. I recommend everyone go get it. You know, but uh, I just uh, you got to go through. Listen, down. you know, uh, let's not get uh, political. Let's we can't talk it. about yeah. vaccines. It's funny how uh, science is now political. But anyway, all right. Um, so you can follow me over at I am Ralph Sutton. Um, my other podcast, the SDR Show, comes out every uh, twice a week, every Wednesday, every Saturday. Uh, we stream it live. I thank everyone. I'm getting more and more. Uh, interactions from good sugar fans which makes me happy it's nice to know that we are reaching people the amount of people that have told me they started running because of me really makes me happy or the people that started doing yoga because of the show really makes me happy uh i know marcus will not have anything to plug and uh we'll just see you next week I, you know it's not that i'm i have nothing to plug i have nothing to plug at this moment i can't just like otherwise it's like junk mail how about you comes one into- time mention your fucking instagram I don't, I don't, I actually, you know, I, I'm, I'm at a loss, you know, because I don't need anything like that. You know, I, right. I can imagine if I had a need for that, I would find how a clever about, way to talk about it. Plug the Good Sugar Podcast Instagram. Plug the Good Sugar Podcast Instagram. No, I have no agenda. I'm here for one purpose only. I'm here to help you to get better. Uh, you're an idiot. Listen. <laughs> Later on, as we scale and we get to a couple of hundred thousand, you're going to watch how I become perverse and corrupt. I'm sure. The All whole right. thing is I'm going to be wearing a suit and tie every time we see Branding say, on every inch of the screen. Yeah, everything. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time on Good Sugar Podcast. Sponsored by Pepsi. 